Hey guys, welcome back to The Witcher. Well, apparently the courtyard is locked, so we can't access the outside just yet anyway. Oh, looks like we got some bandits up there. Okay. There is supposed to be a barrel there. that I can't see. Oh, that's interesting. Chicken! Uh, open this cupboard. We got ourselves fish, coated fish, chicken, and bun. Die, bastard! Mess with me and die. Time to die. Oh. And he had mutton leg. What do you have? Two orange for me. And there's water, so we can't go down there. Going upstairs. Upper floor. Mess with me and die. You'll regret the day you were born. I'll make you squeal. Loot you all. Oh. You'll regret the day. Took care of him. And just some orins out of these people. Nothing much. Alright, this leads to a room. Barrel. Salt Peter Crate Unknown Potion Stairs to Triss's room. Let's sort our inventory. There we go. Library. The 
access to books. I guess not. Oh, what do we got here? Bottled water. We'll take that. There's a crate on the other side of that, but there's a room over here. And barrel. Beer. Bread. There seems to be a lot of food. I'm looking for armor and weapons. Give me some armor and weapons. Battle axe. All right, we'll 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 take that. Now we got a battle axe, a couple of daggers. Inventory's full. Inventory's full. Can't carry any more items. Yeah, I can. Why can't I move it, like, in here? Alright then. A book. Unknown potion. White gull. All right, let's check our inventory. Can we read this book? Right click to read. Okay. Go in evening hall. More books, unknown potion, calcium. Yep. This is a dresser. It's supposed to have clothes in it. I want clothes. Did I not get all the stuff out of the crate? Must be where I can store stuff if I needed. Alright, let's check out this other book. that in the bestiary and sort out these items all right I have stuff in the ingredients tab and lastly we need to check the stairs to Triss's room all right we got a trunk right here grindstone Ooh. 
Okay. Wardrobe. All right, we got a whetstone that we can use if needed. Whetstone, grindstone. Uh huh. Let's go up. Uh, alcohol of some kind. This looks familiar if you played any of the Witcher games. More food. I think that takes care of that. Mm, the barrel still is not there. Uh, unknown barrel. A chemic ingredient. Alright, gotta make a healing potion for her. Uh, where, where is it? In quests. Mm. Journal. I must explore the rest to make sure everybody's alright. Huh. I gathered all the ingredients and killed all the bandits. I should talk to Lambert. Formula. Basic alchemy character developments. Monsters. Hmm. All right. Uh, what else? Wonder if there's anything down here that uh, I'm missing. No, no, no. I came from there. There's nothing. Okay. It's one of my... It's one of the drawbacks. RPG. I'm a... I'm a little... Little up in the air when it comes to certain things. Alright, let's talk to... Him. Need anything, Wolf? I have some questions. What is it? What do I use as the base for my potion? Alcohol. The better it is, the purer and more powerful your potion. Okay. You seem to feel at home here. Well, I've always preferred an armory to a lab. 
Though Vesemir plays up the importance of potions, he's hardly an expert. After all, he's always taught swordplay. Still, he tries to teach us everything he learned when he was young, and that was a while back. But to be honest, I don't care for all these powders, mushrooms, and other trash. Couldn't Triss have helped with Leo's mutation? Maybe. It's a little more complicated than that. See, we've never shown her the lab, and the last mutation was completed years ago, before the battle. Vesemir can tell you more. You really think Triss never used magic to peek inside? She respects our secrets, and she's done a lot for us. For you. I trust her. So why haven't you shown her the lab? Triss would like to use our secrets to heal people and such. I've no doubt she'd try, but it's never that simple. Ever heard of the gnome Alfred Nabel? Eskel, I have amnesia. An incomparable inventor, like most of his race. Through years of research, he discovered an amazing substance. He intended it for use in mines and quarries. Though a genius, Alfred failed to foresee his invention's possible applications. Others quickly realized that a substance designed to rip granite from the ground could destroy castle walls. Some even considered using it in open battle. I get it. So what happened to Alfred's discovery? Mages stopped it from spreading. Alfred committed suicide, and his lab burned down. Mm. Tell me about the trial of the grasses. It's a three-stage process. The first is the choice. Leo completed it, enduring the hard training and diet. I presume it's more than your basic lettuce and carrots. Special mushrooms, mosses, and herbs are grown in the lab. Combined with training, they accelerate muscle growth and digestion, improving the body's general condition. Does everyone pass the first stage? Unfortunately not. The liver and heart often fail, and the mind sometimes too resulting in excessive aggression. What's the second stage? The trial of the grasses. More idiotic tales have been conjured up about that than about princesses and dwarves. Before the raid, the lab contained vials, hearths, formulae, herbs, and the grasses. A mage and his magic were all that was lacking. Did you ever witness a trial? Just one, our own. I thought I was going to lose it when your hair turned white. The grasses affect the nervous system, so magic must control the process. The trial results in lightning-fast reflexes, reaction times normal people will never attain. Only four out of ten survive. Quite a cut. And the last stage? I don't know the specifics. It involves changes like the mutation of the eyes, the bone marrow, hormones. In exchange, we see in the dark, heal much faster than ordinary folk, and gain increased resistance to poison. Interesting. What's the cost? We're infertile. The changes are irreversible? Entirely. Hmm. Did you see the magic storm? Yes, I was out hunting. Just before the storm came, a swarm of night jars took flight. Hundreds of them. Gray streaks across the sky, trilling wildly. Usually less of them gather, and their cries rarely sound so desperate. When the storm came, I gave up the hunt and headed toward Kaer Morin. Met the others on the way. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we need. We'll talk later. Kind of walked right into the conversation that uh, had no actual startup point. It's weird. Like I said, weird design flaws. Choices. Oh, that was a tough fight. I found a few intruders upstairs, but... I understand they won't be a problem. Lambert, however, let the Frightener get to him. Nothing serious. Good you went after Triss and handled that mage. She was able to salvage some equipment, but it looks like the main device has vanished. Our beautiful sorceress was right, I know. You did well, Wolf. Take this armor and sword. I've been keeping them for you. Yes! Are there other witchers? There were three witcher schools in all, but it's been long since I've heard word of the other two. You've met all the witchers I know of, except for Berengar. Did I know him? I don't believe so. 
An introvert, he chose his own path. Actually, none here can say they know Berengar. He often ran away from Kaer Morhen, though he would always return in the end. After the trial of the grasses, he finally accepted his destiny and started training for real. Why isn't he here? I don't know. We lost touch with him a while back. Can I ask you something? Of course. Who was Leo? One of hundreds of orphans of the war with Nilfgaard. I apprenticed him six years ago. I'm sorry. We'll recover our secrets and find Leo's murderers, even if they fled to the end of the world. Can I ask you something? Of course. You mentioned defending Kaer Morhen before. Yes. Fifteen witchers once lived here, training boys for their trials. Only they knew the secrets of mutation. Witchers who set out on the path and failed to assimilate among humans wintered here. Before the battle, twenty-three witchers and forty students called Kaer Morhen home. Too damned few for the mob that attacked. I never knew why they came. Some say a sudden explosion of anger born of disdain for witches. But no. Someone provoked the mob with flyers filled with lies. Special agents read them to the peasants. Truer still, the fanatics could never have taken the fort without the aid of sorcerers, though they outnumbered us by far. They didn't even spare the youngest. I alone survived, concealed among the corpses. Walk around, Wolf. The skeletons remain. You may find a flyer. There used to be hundreds. Memorize it as a warning of the evil humans can perpetrate. Wow. Can I ask you something? Of course. Any idea who attacked? No, but the mage suggests no ordinary bandits. We found pins adorned with salamanders on the dead. The symbol of their organization, perhaps? I sense hard times ahead. We'll speak later. All right, I got new armor. And a new sword. Yep, it changed. Witcher's steel sword, it was once a rusty sword. Okay. Trophy slots. Uh, I don't have any more of these uh, quick slots unlocked. Okay. What do you need? Done. I have the ingredients and it's safe upstairs. Good. You'll need two more things to make the potion the claw of a mighty beast and some celandine. Vesemir will tell you where to find them. Let me teach you the formula. Yes? Lambert gave me the formula. I take it you already have white gall and calcium equum. I do. What next? You'll need celandine. Take what I have. Plus the claw of a monster like the Frightener. To skin a creature, take a sharp knife and cut along the torso. You'll find the Frightener's carcass in the upper courtyard. Once you've extracted the claw, rest by the fire while making the potion. Okay. So that rusty sword is no longer usable. I would have to drop my axe. That's fine. All right. I got the dagger. Got a dagger. To extract alchemic uh, 
components, left click on the monster's carcass. Got the eye and got the claw. Oh, can I go out here? Well, there's a lot of bones over there. Doubt there's anything I can do with this winch. The gate is destroyed. All right, let's go ahead and make the potion now. There's nothing more we need out here. by the fire left click on the vial to create potions all right where is the vial oh up here all right select the formula to add the ingredients to the vial automatically then left click on the mix in the bottom right hand of the screen Potion for Trish. All the ingredients are there. Did it get made? Oh. Oh, mix. There we go. And that's done. Now where did they put her? Yes? Mm. We'll speak later. Did they take her to her room? A ghost barrel. Get up there. I saw a green name other than him. Is there a 
Yeah, he's here. Okay. What is it, Wolf? Any thoughts on the attackers? Amateurs. If not for the mage and the frightener, we'd have beaten them blindfolded. But they had a mage and a frightener. They robbed us and killed Leo. True, but we'll find them. Leo said he almost defeated you. We were sparring when that storm arrived. My medallion jerked so hard I almost fell. The boy saw an opening. Ah, uh, he certainly had potential. Then Marigold appeared, shaking, delirious. She insisted we chase the wild hunt. Vesemir agreed. He always had a soft spot for her. You dislike Triss? She's too pretentious for my taste. Mm, a wild hunt. Can you tell me about the fighting styles witchers use? The art of combat involves three traditional sword fighting styles, plus a few variations designed for combating monsters. Start with the basic styles. Kier Marin is the wolf school. Old Vesemir always made sure we trained more as warriors than mages, though we also learned the signs. Witches employ three fighting styles. There's Adan Enye, the fiery dancer, which we call the fast style. The Viroledin Nefde Fendlediv, the group style. And the Temerian Devil, the strong style. Which style do you want to hear about? Sure. The fiery dancer sounds interesting. The legendary elven swordsman and poet Nisail created it, basing the system of steps and cuts on his observations of wildcats, especially the ocelots that elven rulers used as palace guards. The fiery dancer favors speed and agility over strength of blows. Opponents simply don't have the time to strike back. The ideal swordsman is a flame that cannot be hurt and inflicts wounds each time it is touched. Nisail himself wrote that. The style is popular among the elven aristocracy. Which style do you want to hear about? Uh, tell me about that Tell one. me about the Viroledin style. Literally translated, it is the Nine Sun Sword style. The swordsman of Viroledo developed it as a method for tackling several opponents through complex slashing sequences. They say masters of this style can fight nine opponents simultaneously. Which style do you want to hear about? Temerian Devil sounds familiar. <laughs> sounds poetic, but there's little or no philosophy involved. Devised by Temerian Lansknechts, simple men. It's best against heavy armored opponents. Which style do you want to hear about? Yeah, I've heard I enough. think I've heard enough. All right. We'll speak later. All right, that's it for that. Interesting. Now, these styles are not really much one used in the second nor the third game. To my knowledge. How can I help? Um, okay. We'll talk later. I guess that's what was needed. I have the dagger that I can't use. Alright, we're going to Triss's room. She's probably up there. And this might be a good place to save and in the episode now you guys stay furry comment and subscribe if you so feel like it and i hope to see you all in the next video bye